Welcome back, OGN Legion. And yes, that is a victory for BBQ. But if you didn't watch the game, it's more it's, it's a difficult story to tell how that particular game went, wasn't it? Bob? It had a lot of twists and turns. It there was some Deuce Ex Machinas both ways. Oh, yeah, but like the twist at the end. You would never see it coming. Luke Make sure you watch it till the very end, guys. It was a really fun one here between BBQ and Jin Air. Definitely brain not need apply for some of it, but regardless, <laughs> BBQ controlled the start and the end by picking up the victory. And I see some replays here, and the MVP is honestly going to be a difficult one. I'm completely confused by who could possibly get it. It's going to be crazy. That was where my vote went. Not entirely sure whether I'm like completely happy with it, but he bought, he built the first Banner of Command, and honestly, that was the MVP this game. It does feel like if you could give the MVP to an item, Banner of Command won it all ends up. So congratulations to Crazy. A lot of stuff happening this game. It was an insane one. Lots of bounces. A Scion getting interrupted by his own team's Weaver's Wall. Everything happened in this game, and the Banner of Command, which is often the Scion item we see, at least, in the LCK, ended up being used against the Scion Cop to an incredible amount, specifically how much work the Winions and Topside were able to do before. First, the chase came through, and then the final turret dive, where even off-screen, we were missing the fact that apparently Zaya ate a whole lot of turret damage to hasten the demise yeah. of Jin Air. This was the Winions, and we get to focus on the other side, so Unfortunately, yeah, we sort of skipped that whole fight that uh, BBQ managed to get themselves back into this game, but this is the result. And uh, it's a whole bunch of weirdness. Decisive teleport in. Team's coming back, but let's watch here Teddy on the back end, tanking up the turret, leashed for so long. The last one was a sniper hit, by the way. This <laughs> yeah. turret was not a Jin Air fan. Sadplane.jpg from that particular turret shot. And then Jin Air got caught one by one. They did not close on Ghost. Teddy took a couple too many turret shots, and just like that, Crazy is the best. It was correct. <laughs> Apparently. I mean, he still does look a little bit confused, and we'll see whether BBQ can back it up with a more controlled performance in game number two. Same can certainly be said for Jinnah, who really needed to get their things together earlier on in that game, because it was the Teddy waiting game that Jinnah have snuck back to so many times but you raised the point before this match we want to see more out of grace we want to see more out of so on and we want, we want to see these solo laners start giving teddy some room to be able to actually move and not have the weight of his entire team on his back because this guy's getting tired you can see him right there on your screen you saw him at the end of the last game this guy's ready to have a relaxing game where somebody else maybe carries and that ends up being the fallback when the early game plan goes awry and Jeanette had a really strong early game comp mismanaged it and then their only fallback, it feels like, as a team, when the early game doesn't go their way, is what if Teddy had six items? That seems to be really all they have. So I think addressing the early game points is going to be a lot more important than Teddy understanding turret leashing problems. But who knows? We'll, uh, we'll throw that one out. Game one is over. Long live game two here between BBQ and Jin Air. And look at this blue side ban. Wow, a yeah. blue side Varus ban is a little bit of a thinker. And Jinnair went from Alistair last ban to Alistair first ban this time around. Going to follow that one up with the Callista, which seems to be the red side staple so far this series. We mentioned that she would be highly contested between these two very uh, Zaya specific, uh, sorry, um, Callista specific players. I'm saying Zaya instead of Callista again. I've made that mistake in the past, but she is the one that's going to be banned away. The Galio and the Skana to follow. Sejuani is going to be left open. Azir also open this time around as far as differences in the bands. Yeah, your first thought was that BBQ were fishing for a jungler, but with Skana taken away, they're happy to go for a Zaya Rakan of their own. No Callista Rakan on the red side to answer it. Outside chance, you deny away the Rakan, but Zaya Rakan certainly was doing a lot of work towards the end of the game, but some mistakes in mid game took away some of its value. So the reason why we see the Varus ban on blue side now in hindsight is they wanted to go Zaya Rakan. They didn't want to give up Varus Braum as a duo. That's kind of the other intensely strong laning duo. You can go Caitlyn Braum if you want to. It's not much of a replacement like for like. And they will, of course, take away the Sejuani. But Trick has many options available to answer. it. Yeah, can go for the Jarvan if he wants to. Zack is something that he has played but not necessarily had the most success on. Who actually decides to go with it here? Will be a lot of scaling potential for late game team fights, and there's the Rakan that they have to lock in here this round. Speaking of locking in this round or missing out on, Rise is available. So yeah. it does feel like 80 carry into 
Absorbing some Rise bands is one way you could go, but locking in a Rise and then reevaluating is also a possibility. Not often that we see Rise available. Well, Ezreal being considered, no mid laners have actually been picked at the moment. So you mentioned, I mean, Rise fell through the entire draft in game number one. And the eventual decision here is going to be the Caitlyn. Ezreal would have been a surprise because would have struggled in the early trades against the Zyra Khan unless they were able to rush to lane for a very fast level two. But now Caitlyn there just for the ultimate safety in the bot side. Caitlyn has not been a death level pick for the side of Teddy. One and three on the season. So hasn't been able to dominate games there, but still is going to be an impressively strong lane for the side of Jyn'Air. And now the mid lane champion pool is very likely to be pinched and maybe even throw in a Gnar band somewhere along the line. Or first up here for BBQ, Prophet Papa is back for game number two as well. The other one went. Went to North America, so <laughs> yeah. I'm a we'll see what Zoe's going to be banned here. Do you think that uh, Grace wants to pick that one up? Do they ban Talia and then pick Zoe? Like what's that would be that would be a fun way. I like some gamesmanship here. I always like when the team that has the first pick in the next round leaves open a thinker for the enemy and says, "Hey, you know, we're going to pick Zoe if you don't ban it with a ban." So Talia here would represent that, but maybe they just want to roll back the Talia comp. Yeah. If you're Jin Air, seems a very likely draft. Whenever you see such an index into a winning bot lane that Talia is likely to follow on her current power level on patch 8.3. Maybe can just ban it away, but then Rise exists also. So maybe ban away neither and take one. It's going to be the approach when it comes to mid laners. They'll just ban away a Scion, for example, and they'll go with the Trundle. So a different approach there. So very likely to be a Talia or a Rise locked in here for Jyn'Air. Yep, so one hasn't actually found any success on the Trundle, but has picked it in the past, so could possibly counter pick for top lane and grab that as the... I mean, he found epic lane success against that it, Smith. He certainly did. It was certainly not his fault that game that things fell apart, but uh, his teammates pushed up too far, a bit of rookie mistakes by Jyn Air. And because the Talia makes the most sense with the draft, they will visit there, but there's still power left on the Rift for BBQ. Yeah. And is it going to be the rise now for Tempt? No, the Corky Zaya composition. This is a certain favorite for BBQ as well. They've done this one so, so many times. I would love to see it. And it definitely could be the lock-in. Going to go back to Orin Duty. No surprise there. But crazy. And I ensure they have just the most Wombo Engage possible on the side of BBQ. Yeah, and right. they're not going to play that champion, Ignar. Just wants to show that he's still a Blitzcrank player. Yep. And an Amumu player, of course. I think I that's probably like, a shout out to Cloud Templar. I feel like Bang doesn't go for the shout outs as much as he used to to Cloud Templar. Yeah, that's a bit sad. They're thinking about the mid lane pick here. Don't know why they were showing Ramus. And it'll be the Syndra. Okay, so they're actually going to double down on lane. An old laning pick into the Talia. Recent Syndras have won, but not necessarily impressed us with the pick, especially on patch 8.3. So that's going to be a bit of an evolving story to return to attempt, as we do have MVP in our second series. I'm sure Ian is watching this very closely. And jealously, because he does love the Syndra. Are we actually going to counter for lane here? This would be the opposite of Sion. This would be doubling down on some lane that's pressure. And okay, Here okay. we go. Some damage on the top side of the map. I am ready to yell about tentacles, things like that, smacking horns around. This is brilliant. And Tempt, he's one of our successful Syndra players. I was going to bring that up as well. 100% win rate so far in the one game that he's played. And on the red side, this is the possibility for Jyn'Air. They blind pick Scion on the early that this went for the safe tank option in game one. Now it's time to roll the dice. One game down in a best of three. They go for Alawi to have a winning top, a winning bot lane at least early, and even a shoving mid lane if you can navigate around the all-in from the Syndra. So this is a, an even more highly pressured draft than they were able to put together in game one. But also the same story. If this falls behind, there's not even going to be a Teddy win condition. It falls and loses. So this is very much about shoring up all the early game mistakes. No more trolling of teammates. No more small mistakes. No more over-aggression in engages. You cannot have Elawi and Caitlyn fall behind the comp they're facing or they will lose. Yeah, exactly right. It's not like Zaya. It's not like whenever you hit that three-item spike, if you're a Caitlyn, you're going to do damage and things like that. It's just not going to be that situation. If you are too far behind, you can even start getting the items, but everyone's just too far ahead for you to make a reasonable comeback. And it's only our second ever LCK game of the Alawi. Rascal subbing in for Kingzone Dragon X. Played the first. Only yeah. ever our second one. Let's see if the victory can come up here for the side of Jyn'Air Greenwings and force a game three.
Yeah, see whether Jinnair can bring it back. I certainly love watching the Alawi far more than the tank battles. Let's do it. Let's get into game number two. Oh man, the BBQ fans out in force tonight. We'll see whether we actually get a crowd shot to show you guys, but there's certainly a lot of uh, a lot of fandom going around. Jinan actually considering some early game shenanigans, which is often what you do if you're the Braum team, but not actually with the Braum. So Wraith is on the bottom side of the map. In the end, they are just going to head away. Level one plans here. Always fun track as the fans are back with their lovely signs for BBQ. We fry the game was what they were flying last time. As they're trying to fry trick, but it's going to be a bit of poke damage onto the BBQ jungler. Yeah, it's probably going to be able to get himself back here as well. Still very early on in this game. As we are going to check it out, it is going to continue to be the Kleptomancy Alawi, which has been the popular choice. This grand entrance onto Ignar is going to immediately be regretted. Not Has sure. to flash to get out of the way, the concussive blows. These BBQ moves, this re-engage, or the attempt at the grand entrance engage from Ignar, was questionable at best. Have to remember the Braum strength at level one. The flash going to be down. Even more lane control for the Caitlyn Braum with the ignite on the Braum secured as well. Yeah. Just very strange. I just don't know why you would ever try and cross the river if you're against a team with Braum. It just, just doesn't seem worth it most of the time. Feels like they're trying to do too much on the side of BBQ. They're trying to answer the fact that Juno went for a late invade to see whether the two camp clear was going to happen on the top side. Knowing the vision was placed, Trick will not be going for the very standard Gromp and blue buff power farming and will be going to his bot side of his jungle. Claim as much of that as possible. We should talk about the Alawi in the top side. That's the new thing again. Only second ever LCK game. Never been banned of the Alawi here in Korea. It only goes one way, struggles in team fights unless it has so much setup from its team. So, super laning pick, which means it's exciting. Finally, we can lock that camera on top side as the game goes on. And even if there's a jungle gank, the 1v2 double kill is always possible. Yeah, and you mentioned that KT game as well, where the trundle from Soan was actually very, very good in that sort of split push. I'm playing solo League of Legends scenario. Grace in a lot of trouble against Tempt here. Sort of wishes he had an electrocute proc doesn't actually go on with the spellbook this time around to make sure that he's as mobile as possible. Definitely has some spellbook shenanigans. Only Ignar are the supports, and as the ultra playmaker Alistair player, makes sense that he is going to be jumping on the spellbook on the Rakan. Wraith double down on the Guardian, which as the game goes on is going to be very useful to try and stop the one-shots from the Syndra. Yeah. Grace actually pulling one back here against Temp. Just looks like a lot of buttons have been landing from these two mid laners because they've been Losing a lot of their health bars. He's all about the vertical jungle in this game. If you can allow Elawi to push up, and obviously max the test of spirit, the E first, and look for all the harass, and there's no chance of an enemy gank because your jungler controls the top side of the map. Should just be pain coming through for Crazy, who, after a turret shot was taken by Soan, been competitive in the first trades. Yeah. Only gets better for the Elawi, though. Yeah, as soon as. First items come in. Feels a lot better. Death's Dance from uh, So One probably going to be that first choice. One of the only champions in the game that still builds that item, so it makes me pretty happy. We'll see if the rush comes. There's many different ways to approach. Could just be the Black Cleaver also. Or it could be dead. See what happens. So One down to almost 200 health. Not even quite that number. So saw Rascal struggle in lane, and I believe it was the same matchup, was definitely in a tank matchup. Can be a struggle in the early game, as Bell's Breath trades are always like we talk about, the winner in the melee matchups. Yeah. This trick's going to get discovered, so at least now so on, I'm going to be able to play a little bit more aggressively. You know that... Zack was corralled bot side after he leapt away from the Talia, so it does allow So One to continue to be pushing with reckless abandon here. Usually, this is like the worst spot your lane can be in as a top laner because you're so close to the enemy turret, but the minions aren't crashing to bounce back. But he does get the ability to push in after Talia helped him out with the eyes on vision. I got a suggestion for a skin, Papa. I'm listening. 
think we need a Mrs. Trunchbull Alawi's. Okay. Because Alawi's, like, she's got two skills that are about, like, tests and lessons. You know, they got Test of Spirit, Harsh Lesson. Seems to work out here as the Battle Dance does fly forward from Ignar. Gets himself out of trouble. What do you reckon? I don't know if the name's sexy enough, but I like where you're going from, man. Eh? Well, it could be Principal. We have a Headmistress Fiora already. Well, exactly. This is what we're going to have to do. Okay, I'm going to have to get out of here. Ignar not going to find anything. Not even going to gleamingly quill him on his way past. Probably not worth the mana, to be honest. So the battle warding happening from Omti. This is what you do when you have these three lanes that have a lot of pushing options. Even Grace is taking up health in order to push in the wave. So big benefactor there is supposed to be the jungler on the side of Jynair. Speaking of Jynair, they're going to be able to deny any sort of freeze on the bottom side of the map. Ghost is going to lose a few of these creeps. Hopefully not the cannon minion, as that's going to be the first one to go. Confirmation that Soan will be rushing the Black Cleaver in this game. Yeah. Hopefully a second item, Death Dance, so I don't look too stupid. It's very attractive on the allowing, because of all the healing from physical damage. Many different ways to build this champion. Gonna be the extra gold generation. It's the Klepto allowing, in case you're wondering at home. After the nerf, not quite as much gold generation and has to be much more committal than the gangplank in order to pick up the Klepto prox. But after all the vertical jungling, the control ward sticking, and Zack being chased out of his topside jungle, still should be pretty profitable times for the Alawi. Yep, and Alawi, I mean, if you're talking about being committal, I, I think that's pretty much a whole playstyle every single time anyway. You want to really commit to chilling out in your lane, setting up the tentacles, and getting everything working out for you. See where the so one is just going to be the lane only Alawi that can try and set himself up for the one versus two kills if he has ever ganked after picking up his first round of items. Not really sure there's another type of Alawi. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say. There's, I guess, support Alawi that just kind of ignores, it, it, sorry, really annoys the tank supports in the preseason. Gorilla was trying to tell me he'd make it a thing. I didn't believe him. <laughs> yeah, good idea to not believe him. Is he crazy, he's actually got a lot of minions hanging out underneath this turret. Someone's getting mad at him. That spirit does register, but under turret, so right now you'd say that Soan isn't really running away with the lane as much as you'd expect, given the strength of the Alawi in lane, but hasn't been punished. We're kind of waiting for Jinnah, though, to take the next step. They're up in gold, about 600. A large amount of that's going to be Klepto, but also 10-odd CS lead in both top lane and bot lane, actually being able to open up the map, get the first objective that was denied from them in many ways in game one. The next step of the plan. The early game, good for Jynair in game one. The mid game, let themselves down a couple of times. Need to arrest those sort of mistakes. I just feel like they've indexed further into the early game this time around as they well. They really, really need margin. to make it work. Otherwise, the outscale will be real. Yeah. Well, as far as opportunities are concerned, Trick is going to be able to clear out at least some of this vision. Now, Humpty is going to reveal himself. Okay, so on could be in trouble. Trick's gonna be able to set himself up. Call the Forge God. So on gonna get knocked up. There's the elastic slingshot, but that doesn't actually get most of the work in there. Okay, a lot of tentacles set up, but he's still going to fall. So on without the teleport to get back either. And it just looked like Jin Air got the hell out of there, and they didn't necessarily need to. Looking for a turret dive. Umti misses the ultimate. Might look for it anyway. Yep, stopwatch. Bit of a piggy drive by as Umti's gonna have to use the flash to get out of the way of the turret. Such a pretty big mistake by Jynair. They had the vision and also the blast plan. There's a lot of yep. trading happening here. Double knockout comes in for the grand entrance. Everywhere. So meanwhile, in the mid lane, tenth, that one last auto attack. Grace finds it. Double and kidnap. kidnap onto two members. Thankfully, there was a cheeky little minion underneath the turret. Permafrost comes in as Trick eats up a Bloblet. Umpty's Umpty. dead. Yep, Soul Division comes down. Umpty's going to be taken out by Trick. And Grace really desperately wants to be able He's to kill these ground. little blobs, but they can't do it. Yep, only little pebbles to fly through. Jinnia, a little bit of a disaster, and BBQ going to start again on the bottom side. Only a single knock-up as the Glacial Fissure is dodged by Ghost. Moves himself to the side, battle dance onto Ignar, but the flash forward uh -oh. from Teddy. He's once again tanking turret shots like a beast. And the Blade Caller just not off cooldown just yet from Ghost. 
Oh man, there's just so much aggression from both of these teams today. And all three lanes things happening, but you see what happens when you index so heavily on the early game. Both teams know it, Atlas. Everyone has the cheat sheet on who's strong when. And the problem for the side of Jin Air is it really pressures them and hurries them into making things happen early. So go through everything that happened. Top lane gank was successful. So we're seeing the visit into mid lane. This is after all the action. This is off screen that we missed. They do get the final auto attack in and kill Tempt. Massive kidnap comes through. Umti's first thought is to keep going aggressive under turret. But uh, the turret really has uh. been BBQ. It should have the big Roosters uh, logo onto it because that was a uh, pretty poor juggling. It's never going to tear Umti. He never slows down. Yeah, it was the red buff that actually trolled him super hard underneath that turret. That was the biggest problem. Peacemaker flies forward, but Umti had given up his position. These uh, minions are now just going to get destroyed by the turret. Next wave actually following in as well. So half health, bottom but out up. If we rewind all the way back to the first blood of the game, the problem that I see there for that play was that Umti had just cleared the uh, vision plant to know that the enemy blue buff was started and then peeled off. Syndra was off the map for a good 30, 35 seconds. The lane gank was pretty telegraphed by the side of BBQ and yet so on, still opted into it. So, okay, one mistake happened. The problem there is, Jine remember how much they've indexed in the early game and how they have to make it work in the first 15 to 20 minutes. They double down on ganks. They look a bit desperate, Atlas, in some of their plays and the desperation turned against them and so on. He's not even winning these trades. Yep, ultimate does come down from so on though. Wants to stay with his tentacles. He's getting so much health back. Will the Bellows breath be actually here? As look at the health. He gets Crazy another done. one. The test of spirit could actually be the end of Crazy. Thankfully, he has himself a bellows breath gets himself oh. out as he has to dodge uh, tentacles now forever. He won't be going back home. So this time, crazy misplays. He flashes in for the auto, thinking the passive had applied from the bellows breath. It hadn't, so the auto does almost no damage. Thought he had picked up a solo kill, ends up just blowing his flash and almost dying anyway. Oh boy, seeing some rough stuff on the rear, seeing a lot of excitement. We take a deep breath. The infernal is claimed for Jin Air. Not able to have the Allowee explode into life yet. The Black Cleaver is certainly going to help. Yeah. But having some uh, multiplicative scaling coming in for a Jin Air team feels real good. I do like to be able to bring it past that 40 minute mark. So Infinity Edge done here for Teddy. Not going for any attack speed early on. Looks like going for a little bit more of a skirmish based build. Wants to do some relevant damage with these critical strikes early instead of just getting the attack speed, getting the flat damage to take down turrets. Trick. He's flying through. But uh, in the end, not going to be able to find too much. He's putting on pressure where he can. Bottom side of the map, Jin Air doing decently well as far as getting vision. They don't have the Tali Awards this time as... Okay, there we go. Grace gets the ward over. Grace 1-0-0 zero and zero, went for Merc Treads. Very stand against the Syndra. Trying to skip steps. Banshee Veil vale rush no longer happens after the latest nerf to it. Which again was many moons ago, but did move away the mid lane meta from a Banshee Veil vale rush. And with Merlinomicon as the only item, if the first CC hits from Zac, you probably do one shot with the Syndra. So have to be so careful at controlling mid and mid lane control is what allows him to roam. So there is that tussle forward and back as once again, we're gonna see plenty of fighting between Soan and Crazy. Soan just wants to be underneath the turret, I think, as that was a very, very, very long range test of spirit. This one actually going to fully apply and the nightmare scenario on of even more tentacles to respect. Yep, too many tentacles. What's the right amount of tentacles? Um, I, think, I think three is probably right. And then Anything over that? You, as soon as you're over three tentacles, it's just too much. All right. Atlas Obviously, approved. I'm not a massive fan of octopi. It's just way. But you did want to show off that you knew the plural of octopus. <laughs> yeah. <I did. laughs> Damn it! Am I that transparent? Yes, you are. <laughs> Does that add first to my rodeo. charm, or does that make everything worse? I, I think it's person to person on that one, Alice. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, Grace setting himself up. Will be able to find himself this control ward, though, as he actually just rides the wall. We'll get out just before the turret. No flash left onto Zaya. Yep, Featherstorm is great, though, from Ghost, as he squeezes himself in between the wall and the tower. That does confirm, of course, you cannot get over terrain. Same thing with Jarvan ult. You cannot duck over it with the Featherstorm. Oh, yes. But Talia all the way back, just rocks up to wait to the mid lane to pick up the minion wave. Turret very low bot side. Again, Jinair. Remember at every point, 
They are looking for turret destruction, rotation, and to get this game done as early as possible, they cannot close out the first turret pre-15 minutes. I really do like the Jin Air style. I don't like the build from Teddy. I feel like if he wanted to actually just focus on taking down the turret like they're doing, then I would have gone for maybe Berserker's Greaves and grabbed the Pickaxe and the BF Sword instead. I mean, the other approach is to just walk up, put down the turrets, so the traps is top side. We're seeing some fun Alawi times, but yeah, it's all about the, does come in though. It's so. all about the trap crit. That's what they're looking for there, is pushing up to the turret, putting down a trap and trying to kill us. So I'm looking for a solo kill. Yeah, speaking of trying to kill us, so on. Gonna fall down very low as Call of the Forge God hits the second time, but Crazy at least saves his own life. Who has done more damage in topside, the turret or the Orn? I guarantee the turret. 150% <laughs> the turret. Here's the teleport. Okay, Ignar gonna join in. Gets himself the quickness as the grand entrance comes down, but... Okay, that's uh, just an easy quick kill. I and like it. Yeah, second kill onto the Alawi, who doesn't have teleport to get back to lane either. Ignar will be at the die. cost of the bot lane turret. This is gonna go down anyway. So the move from or from the uh, Orin and the Rakan, I still give a passing mark. They're able to pick up a kill. He not almost died randomly on the back he end of all of that. Yeah, he almost died to the test of spirit. A uh, little debuff, meaning that there were tentacles everywhere. More than three, but definitely more than three. This general disarray only represents a thousand gold and infernal lead to the side of Jin Air. So I would say, right now, they're behind where they wanted to be at this point. Second Infernal spawning in a minute 30 needs to be Jin Air, as they need to keep up the pace. You can't afford to retreat into your shell in any moments. That seeing Grace turn on to temp, very nice first salvo of damage. Yeah, Grace just looks so good on the Talia. It's been impressing more and more. The new Jin Air mid laner. Haven't seen a lot of justice recently. It was a bit one for one earlier on in the season, but they've decided that Grace is the man that they're relying on. Second, I can understand it. Second turret could be through the Rift Herald that Umti had already claimed. All the neutral objectives going the way of Jin Air, as you'd expect with a comp like this. And Alawi being self-sufficient, dying, but still keeping up a decent CS lead. Yeah, and Umti actually picked that one up a while ago, so we'll need to throw that one down just after this blue buff is secured by Grace. Grace almost gets him over the wall there as well. That was cute. He's going to come back. So They Teddy. might just be trying to line it up with Infernal while you put down the Rift Herald. Oh, that's a good point. And just try to start up the Infernal, but just going to use it now. Very late. This is the rotation over from Jinan. Sindra's bot side doesn't have teleport anymore. Pushed over to the clans. It looks like the Siege is going to be the strategy. Is Trick's going to be discovered. And Tower will go. No worries there at all. And they might actually be able to have their cake and eat it too, Papa, as the dragon now going to be considered five seconds until that one's up and they know exactly where BBQ are. And Crazy is forced under turret, doesn't have teleport to get there. It's exactly what Alawi wants. Keep it in the 1v1. Yep, no options. Just make it a 4v4 on the rest of the map. Which should theoretically get more difficult as the game goes on for Jin Air. There's some opportunities for BBQ. They can stop so on from being able to freely shove turrets. You can see already so much damage is done. Respect being given to BBQ. Castle Blows is going to land onto Trick though. Elastic Sling shuts his way out. Meaning that he won't be able to use that to engage for the next few seconds. Jin Air get themselves the top out of turret, but this felt like a done deal earlier on. It is going to be Jin Air peeling off the dragon. Just wanting to put up, put on enough pressure so that so on was able to get that one done. So still able to get positive trades. Jin Air looking good. Cool, calm, collected. Much more clean than game number one. But still, what is the number, Atlas? What is the gold lead you need as Jin Air to vindicate how much you index into the early game? What are the viewers looking for to understand? And to me, it's it's bigger. It's bigger than 2,000 gold. They need more of a lead because there's a lot more fallback options for BBQ than there is for Jin Air. So while it is still, like you say, better than game one, game one was them botching their win conditions and then almost being able to ride a six item uh, Teddy to victory. Here, it's been better, but they need to keep up. They need this Infernal. They cannot give any free lunches to the side of BBQ. Otherwise, things start muddying again. Well, speaking of which, Trick is going to start off this Infernal Drake. Fair bit of damage is going to come out of Ghost here. It does have his Essence Reaver already done. Ignar just trying to be on watch duty as Temp turns up at the same time, and this should be the dragon secured. Jinnah looking to try and turn themselves in here. Got it! Oh my goodness, Umpty 
Going to be able to grab the second one. So one's feeling this, but he won't go for the flash. Yep. The Doesn't have it available. should actually go down as Grace comes in and finishes off the Zac, but he may have actually overextended. Featherstorm comes in. That's one for Ghost as Trick does eventually fall. It's a fight on multiple fronts, though, as Tempt gets the pushback onto Umpty and Jinnet get themselves back together. It's a one for one in the end. But the Inferno was claimed by Jinnet. Umpty had his flash up, so wanted to roll the dice. Baron has spawned also at 20 minutes. Double Inferno, so that's going to be a growing concern. They know that there's been no ability for BB to get vision in this area because of how strong top lane was pushed up. So while it won't matter now, with low attack speed on Teddy, the visit to Baron is probably not too far away. Yeah. Especially when Soan does a lot of damage to that uh, Baron as well. Probably wants to grab himself something like the Death Stamp so that he could almost just join Teddy and they could take it down together and he could tank it the whole time. Sterex also very likely to come through yep. for the Alawi, working towards that with the Jerome's Fist. So I'm now going to head home. We'll see what he is actually able to complete. I like how we're talking about the strength of a 0 2 0 Alawi. The farming and the Klepto are going to do a lot of aid there, and he got no resources and took the turret. So, yeah. at the end of the day, it could certainly be worse, even if the kill score leaves a bit to be desired. Gonna go rush and match Orin in the bot side, but now we get to, this, to the realm of the game where teleport plays will begin, and that's where you give Orin a pretty big lead. There's yeah. the chance that Sejuani and Braum do enough holding in place that the ultimate from So One is able to do work, but definitely that's an optimistic thing to say. Well, in goes Trick, actually looking to find Teddy, but Stretch Armstrong not gonna land. It's just gonna be a stun out of Tempt, crazy moving himself up, but. Now going to be seen, and so on. He's going to get to that inner turret pretty damn quickly. This is where things can get potentially dangerous for BBQ. Kind of amusing that, you know, in the early game, it felt like Jin Air were too rushed, wanting to hit their win conditions. Now it's on so on to make BBQ feel rushed, and the Weaver's Wall is going to help as well. Yep, Umpt in. Just going to throw in the ultimate. Tempt He's going to get under the tower well enough. And he uses one summoner, still has his flash up. Yep, call the Forge God flies forward, but there's Umpty. Has to use the Arctic Assault, but the knockoff comes in onto Grace. Unleashed power to start this one off and Tempt. Grabs that one with the last Meanwhile, Dark Spear. And they've got a siege on multiple turrets. Yeah, Jin Air says, yeah, you can kill as many champions as you want. We're just going to take down your structures. BBQ need to start the Baron or actually force side of Jin Air to react. They take the easiest objective. Now is the tense moment. Both teams know what each other want to do, and it seems like BBQ were not feeling strong enough to start that Baron. Yeah or decisive enough to make sure that they could stop any of these sieges from going down. Issue is they fully disengage and now three control wards kind of go begging. Wraith is going to be pretty safe, but the shop will come through and let's see if BB can actually return to that area, get something out of the vision that was placed earlier. Yep, things going nicely for Ghost though. He has those two items, so 30% CDR done with the Essence Reaver after the rapid fire cannon now completed. Going to help augment this Zaya, whose range isn't exactly the highest. And Jin Air did praise the right gods, apparently. The gods <laughs> smiled this time. The turret gods don't like them, but the uh, Drake gods are certainly got their back. Third Inferno oh. will be the spawn. How about a mountain to add to it afterwards? Yeah, because what was happening yesterday? You guys got like a million cloud drakes. We got clouds and oceans only. Oh. Yeah, and you were like, oh, in summer, does that mean that we're going to get the Infernal Drakes? No, apparently the next day we're going to get the Infernal Drakes. The thing I'll say is I've been around the RNG Drakes as long as they've been around here in the LCK. When it's a big game, we get sick Drakes. Every telephone <laughs> war only Infernals is flash forced out of Teddy. Yeah, and Trick's actually going to bonk their heads together as well. Glacial Fissure underneath as Trick gets the kidnap, but it's only on a Wraith. An umpty, very high health bar. Uh, Ignar forced to tank up, but he doesn't want to do that. He's not a tank supporter. The Weaver's Wall. Too early. Oh. Too late there. Yeah, just slightly. It was very, very close. I mean, Jinnah won 2v4. Came like a 3v4 when Sejuani came over the wall. Actually won the health bar trade. They're back away. Grace wants to push the top side. That one didn't work out for BBQ. Yep. See, so on. Able to grab himself the red buff, and that makes things even worse. He's very close to grabbing that Sterix gauge as well, and... Close to 50 CS lead, actually above that. That's the ungankable status when the Sterix also comes in. It's when people really do start seeing the 1v2s and 1v3s. Yep. Red buff, got plenty of regen, happy to push up, get Klepto procs. But not really kill threat, it's crazy. Not so much anymore. Crazy starting to build himself into some pretty decent items. The Abyssal Mask will be coming in pretty soon. 
Not exactly what you want to be building against so much physical damage out of Soan, but still happy about it. Going for Warmogs in Abyssal Mask, which is, again, a lot more of the objective-focused items. Warmogs for Baron and the Abyssal Mask for team fights. Buffs up both the Zac and the Syndra on his side. Respect it. That's the thing about Alawi, though. Alawi just wants to lane, will build for lane, and as the Orn, your teleport goes wrong, and then you, you have suboptimal laning items against someone who built for lane. So warps yeah. the game, but... It's the sort of thing that has a lot of counterplay both ways. I like very strong laning champions. I don't think we see enough of them in competitive play. Pantheon, of course, no longer a thing. The Alawi is a fun one because it warps the game, and it's very clear from both sides what to expect. And that's why seeing the next levels upon next levels is something really fun to see as a treat. Well, PBQ actually going to keep themselves out of vision. They now set up trying to find this outer turret. Despite the fact that we've been talking about BBQ as the team with all of the scaling on their side, they have been the ones trying to make proactive moves because it's playing around this Alawi that is so, so difficult. Now that she has hit that inner turret, BBQ have lost this window that they may have as Wraith. Potential trouble as Teddy. That was a real long-range option from Trick as now Ignar jumps his way into the back. Teddy is exploded. Featherstorm saves Ghost Life as Grace is desperately looking for it. Trick might be sacrificed to the old gods, and it looks like he will be. There are so many tentacles raining terror down on BBQ, but Crazy gets the flash to get himself out of there. There it is, tentacles everywhere. Trick, just stop trying to kill Grace. your team. Is look at all of this damage. Ghost gets one back in there, but now everyone's starting to fall on the side of BBQ. Oh man, what a team fight, and so on, managing to make it work. Yeah, Teddy falling down first though, meant they didn't have the damage to profit on the low health members. Ghost surprisingly safe, all things considered. The Infernal may still be the prize. Does Jin Air feel like they have enough damage to start it? The answer is no. No, not gonna happen this time, even though Omdi had full health and so on, was probably gonna get back to it. But now with a couple of assists, he might be somewhere close to that Death's Dance third item. For the Teddy ultra has to, laning build. Teddy has slow as items as well. Going for the QSS before his second zeal item. Actually got it before his first item. Yeah. That was uh I was gonna mention it. But too many things were happening. Still feels like he's very slow in terms of the power. Similar to the previous game where he has a CS lead on his massive, but slowly, slowly getting there. It was assassinated by ghosts of all people in the previous fight. If he stays safe, Jinnair probably does win that team fight. They are gonna be called to the top side. No teleport on the side of Soan, so lane assignment's gonna be a bit more limited. Need the Weaver's War to get there. So no Infernal start yet for BBQ. Yep, perfect timing from BBQ there as well. They are minion whisperers so far today. Grace just not enough to save that outer turret. Now BBQ are gonna start it again. See whether D once again can get that spear. Trick turns up, they actually don't want to wait for it as Wraith is going to get moved back. Call the Forge God, nice triple knockup to come in from Crazy as so on. Can't find himself the right position, so much damage out of Ghost, but it's Temp that picks up the kill. And this is the problem with Teamfight Alawi. She just can't get it done unless everybody is piling in. And if they do, the rest of your team ain't there, she's just dead. Yeah, Janair all disengaged after the call of the Forge God. So on engaged too early. No ability to turn. He's not looking for the interrupt on the back. Does get it onto Wraith. Yeah, he blocks out, uh, getting Teddy back home. Sorry, Grace back home. Teddy did, in fact, make it. It's crazy. Setting up these minions like a beast. We'll see when the uh, Banner of Command finally does come in. That was a huge crit out of Teddy. Crits out of Ghost. Okay, about to get out of whack as well. Three items now complete. The Infinity Edge. And, of course, we... And always bug and play Azik's Convergence when it is the Zyra Khan. Yep. And then for Jin Air, how do you get there? How do you get to actually killing the Zyra? It looks very, very tricky. They have a top laner that doesn't fight front to back. Very difficult for So One to get into the back line. Umti, again, Umti and Talia, sorry, the uh, Sejuani and Talia, very similar in construction. Very good at killing closest target, but pushing damage onto a back line near impossible. So, sort of team fight where Zyra can certainly do a lot of work. Unless they can kill the front line of BBQ faster, which, with it being Zack and Orin, is going to be a pretty steep task. Jane is going to have to be pretty creative in answering the threat of the Zack. Yeah, and now the threat of Tempt as well. He's finished his third item. The Void Staff has come in, so he's a very real problem. 
no one's really tanky enough to deal with it as Trick once again turns up. Doesn't get the arms in there as Wraith could be in trouble. There's the battle dance forward actually from Ignar and they do get the pick up onto Wraith. Can they get one onto Trick as Elastic Slingshot is enough to get him out? Flash has to be used as crazy as hell a tanky and once again so on caught out of position he's gonna get jumped on launched into the sky and destroyed and crazy the whole time was just eating damage for bbq and survives just a beautiful series so far from the top laner out of bbq and grace overextended trying to go after the last few health points BBQ should be able to get towards Baron. And this is why you see Trick go for the engages. It's during a 1-3-1 period for the side of Jin Air, but they're strong enough to dive in and not die. Focus down one member. And if you're rotating up as a Lowie, you've already lost the team fight. They cannot fight front to back. And now Jin Air just looking for a Baron buff. Interrupt is Ignar. Yeah, there's a flash forward. Teddy's actually going to be able to pick up the kill, but they do get the engage. Trick's trying to do what he can. Tempt flies forward, grabs it. That Unleash Power always looks like it's just a little bit too much for what they're trying to go for. And now Trick gets back onto the Baron. Really, he's just 3,000 health. Yeah, they really don't want to let him in here. He's stolen one thing already, but Temp, he's in trouble. Concussive blows. Oh my God, he's still alive. Has the heal. Wraith finally finishes him off, but the jungle is dead. Crazy's in there all by himself, just beating on this purple worm. And BBQ should be able to turn around and finally take this guy out. Yeah, this Baron was leashed for an insane amount of time. So on respawn, looked to teleport in, cancelled it, realized there was no way he wasn't going to donate enough, another kill over. This was about a minute and a half ago. It looks comical to go so deep on a Caitlyn under turret, but doing this forces the double rotation. Grace walks over, not able to get any kills at this early point in the game, and so on. It's predictable where he's coming from. Temp doesn't have vision of that bush, but where else would the Alawi be closing from? No value. Alawi only a passenger in the team fight phase again. Did the work in the early game, but what did we say again and again? Was it enough? The gold lead was never there in a big way. And now the gold lead, the standing gold for BBQ to crash. It was four times to zero. It's now three, four. Yep. Trick looking once again for a dive underneath the turret. Seems to be where he's been for most of this game. As Grace can't find meaningful damage. Has to go for the Banshee's Veil. This game as well against Temp, who has a lot of pressure even on the Syndra. The Zoe, heaps of pressure. Meant that Grace couldn't be flexible in the item build that time around. And once again, Temp challenging with a lot of potential damage. Now with a needlessly large rod on top. And QSS is done for Ghost. Things go from bad to worse so, so quickly once you get these carries at this um, level of fed so effectively. BBQ have done really well at funneling kills onto both Tempt and Ghost. And now you have so on grouping as an Alawi, which lets you know that the 1-3-1 one, one plan has finally been stopped by Trick diving in for the third, fourth, fifth time. Now BBQ are going to have first access to every turret on the map. It's not about split push anymore. It's an accountable Alawi. Now going to see BBQ rotate five man strong and I think there's nothing that Jinair can do to really stop an onslaught short of a very big brain fade from BBQ. Yeah, it's going to have to be a big BBQ overextension, which, you know, into Alawi is a, certainly a thing that has happened in our solo queue games. Sure. If you look back, you can get a little bit hyphy and just don't think that BBQ are going to be that silly. Understand that they are looking down once again at a situation where they can go 4-0 and against Jinair Jin Jin so far this season. Fantastic accomplishment from BBQ. What does it mean, though? They went 0-4 no against idea. MVP. It's like the MVP rule is the opposite when it comes to Jin Air. It's the Jin Air rule where you're good against Jin Air. It's just really suck against At BBQ. least they have a MVP. really good greater than sir, a triangle yeah. between Jin Air, BBQ, and MVP. We know how to play rock, paper, scissors, they, guys. They definitely do. We figured that one out. Jin Air, how do you turn this one around? I don't have an answer to that. Again, you're looking for mistakes rather than anything proactive you can do. They can't play the map. Zach is one of the best champions to punish 1-3-1. One, one. Speaking of punishment. Yeah, call the Forge God. I'm going to find the knockup, but Unbreakable is there. Wraith is going to be A-OK. -okay. No punishment that time. No. The Pain Train going to be delayed for a little while. OK, someone is at least going to be able to grab Crazy. Uh, not able to get any relevant damage, really. Just going to set up a bunch of tentacles. Be annoying. Temp takes a fair bit of damage, but they do manage to kill them off. In the end, I mean, I guess that's just a free 15 gold. And in the end, let's uh, look at the... Okay, BBQ trying to close out the game side of the coin. Uh -huh. It is Caitlyn Talia. So 
I think Baron buff run, uh, running out is going to be a pretty big bottleneck into actually being able to push the base. I don't think Zach wants to turret dive the uh, inhibitor turrets, so they don't feel strong enough to pull that off yet. Problem there is, like you say, Alawi can only be strong this game now if three people jump on top of her and she has the ultimate. A leap of faith really turns it around, so how do you stop that? How do you win the game as BBQ? Take a couple of Barons, so... This could be another extended one, Atlas. We might have the two-game series very much push during our normal three-hour allotment for a series. Well, if BBQ do win, then we've got plenty of time for them to do that. We still have plenty of time if Jin Air win, but this could definitely be an extended series. Oh, yes. Now, Tam's going to be going back home, trying to finish off what items he can. Revenant's Death Cap looks to be coming in next. See whether he can actually finish it. Missed that, that by a lot I of think damage. The observer was showing that uh, Tempt has Elixir of Iron. I could be wrong on that. It's a really big syndrome. But tenacity? Yeah. The tenacity would be very useful against Junior. The kind of what Tempt needs to ensure is that he just gets to ult someone. Probably good news stories abound as long as his ult comes in. The fact that it stacks with no trades as well means that you CC for a very short amount of time. It does have the uh, unsealed spell book, remember, so the cleanse has been picked up, so it just really doesn't want to be cc Okay, BBQ, they find themselves an option, and it is going to be Jin Air going back to their plan of trying to get this split push happening. You don't need turret dive if so on as bot lane is teleports back up, so they're trying another engage. Yeah, in goes Trick, connects the arms onto Teddy. He's done that so many times, gets the flash. There's now Wraith trying to turn this one around. BBQ needs to try and get their carries in the right position. Look at the shields coming in. As Ghost is caught out, we've got the teleport to come in from so on. So now they're fighting into an Alawi, which can be so terrifying. And Trick has sacrificed himself now. Jinna able to get the turnaround that really shouldn't have been possible. Yeah, so on teleported into the backline. That's the only time you're ever going to get into the backline in a 5v5 as the Alawi. So now it's 5v4. Couple more mistakes. A sick Weaver's Wall in this game could actually end to the benefit of Jin Air. These teams so even. Even if we've liked what BBQ have done in the early game. Take a deep breath. Trick is going to be alive in 20 seconds. But finally, another map objective going to go the way of Jin Air Greenwings. Yeah, some weird opposite day shenanigans once again happening, much like yesterday, Papa. So the fact that BBQ didn't necessarily have the early game comp, played with a lot of control in the early game. Now Jin Air, with their early game comp, managed to turn it around in a team fight in the later stages of the game here, 37 minutes in. And the confirmation no one needed, I saw Teddy get a Gathering Storm proc at 10 minutes. So <laughs> they're still going to have plenty of AD. We're going to hit 40 minutes soon. That's when the Gathering Storm really gets out of whack. Tempt and Ghost may also have the opportunity to capitalize off that one as well. Going into that sorcery tree. I mean, there's an outside chance. Damn, Ignar has yeah. Gathering Storm for no reason on the point. Rakan. Sorcery usually means Gathering Storm when you're facing against the Jin Air Green Wings. Looking at gold values, be competitive. 1600 gold is the lead for the Alawi with 120 CS and Klepto, which lets you know that that's actually quite a lot of gold on Crazy, really. Yeah. Crazy's actually done decently well. Five turrets, though, I guess. No, well, it's still five to five. I don't understand. Very confused. Assists must give a hell of a lot of gold. We're able to pick up the five turrets as well, but yeah, it just means very low value out of the Klepto after the nerfs and the fact that you can't just parlay in BK as yeah. the GP would do. Not quite able to capitalize. Wish we could actually have a look at Klepto money. It was actually given. Baron oh, gonna get mad at Ignar, but Ignar answers back with a gleaming quill. I like it. So now BBQ, they've been actually repelled once. Waiting for Trick to see if he pulls the trigger on the elastic slingshot. With so one grouped, BBQ do have run of the map. They don't have to deal with side lanes until Grace shows himself bot lane. Notice that Grace doesn't have teleports, sticking with the cleanse with the unsealed spell book. Does have some of the spells available though, so it's just a back that he needs to opt into before he challenges. Okay, BBQ actually looking for a call. The Forge God gets a knock up onto one. They get a decent stun, but the Unbreakable's there. Oh, Umpty's going to miss it as Ignar Watch uses Ignar. this as the opportunity, gets the quickness onto Wraith, and Umpty's going to jump up in the air, but they're not actually fully committing. Ghost completely out, gets the Feather Storm. Lock of the Iron Solari is going to mean that everything's okay here for Jin Air. And Ghost not going to get taken down, which means that Jin Air are going to back out once the team of BBQ sets themselves up right. That was almost a disaster. Yeah, these fights are more faster than you could have imagined. The Observer had to zoom out so far to show us all the action. The combat, Weaver's Wall, 
posed a lot of problems for BBQ. Notice that Ghost Flash is going to be very offset compared to Teddy's. He used it during that previous fight. And they're going to try to brute force up the Baron. He's got vision on it, even though there are some wards to clear. Khan in base, teleporting up though. Very deep teleport. Teddy's going to be exposed. Once again, we're going to have that huge zoom. Ignar gets the knock up onto Umti, but Trick still holding onto that elastic slingshot, trying to find the opportunity. Onto Jin Air. Crazy. Okay, that wasn't actually him. That was the test of spirit. Getting a bit trolled as Kidnap does come down. Okay, see you later, Umti. There's a lot of tentacles, but the piggy just gets obliterated. Yeah, Umti seems to be off on the memo. Everyone else kiting up, and Umti allowed himself to be kidnapped by the Zack. That means the smite is gone. It's Baron time for BBQ. Yep, Teddy trying to set himself up to try and kill them over the wall if he can. I'm not sure there's going to be too many opportunities. We've got the Leap of Faith available there's for so Zohan. Much damage, the Baron is the party pit for an Alawi, but my god, that Baron did not last very long at all. Call the Forge God. Going to find not too much as Temp flashes forward. They're looking for Zohan. Get himself the stun. There's the knock-up test. Leap of Faith was there, but he dies just too fast. Could have almost been the instant pentakill, but he's just not fed. Zohan, bit of a welfare Alawi this time. And BBQ should be able to break the base. They're certainly going to break the base. It will not be able to end the game with Talia and the Caitlyn alive unless another pick can be thrown the way of BBQ. Trick's very healthy. The follow-up from Ignar makes it a bit of a bouncy castle. With Omti respawning. Very, very unrealistic there. It's going to be a single kill. We mentioned that BBQ's onslaught was largely Baron gated. They need Baron to answer things like turrets. A couple of picks will do that as well. One inhibitor is broken. They're falling back to the Elder. Try to match AD values with the single Infernal. Be buffed up. Just be four percent less on the AD and AP. Pick up the buff. They can get the Baron buff recall. BBQ still in full control, and that's a pretty sweet hat on the syndrome. Yeah, the mega hat. What do you like to call it? I come up with a different name every time. Yeah. What's your, what's your favorite one for this one? Pretty sweet hat. Pretty sweet. Oh right, that was actually. <laughs> oh, come on. And something about a black. Normally and white you hat. call. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, the postman's hat. <laughs> <laughs> we'll call it the postman's hat. We're going to call it the postman's hat now. That's absolutely fantastic. Shout outs to our boy Postman Pat from back in the day. <laughs> 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 All right, we got Phantom Dancer done for Ghost. He's got six items, feeling real, real good. The Phoenix Codex there from Temp. So he doesn't necessarily have six items, but the six and a half is the opportunity with Orn setting himself up next to you. Now BBQ will shove out this top wave. No banners of command this time, makes me pretty sad, but we've got the Redeemed coming in from Ignar as well. How does Janair actually win a true 5v5 when this uh, top laner is pretty much useless on the Alawi? Very little that can happen apart from a massive mistake. Poke damage is going to hit, Spirit Visage, and a Warden's Mail not going to be enough tankiness. Minion Wave in mid lane is pushed out, so at least they can actually look for something resembling a 5v5. Yeah. Ignar is going to be interrupted on his advance. Yeah, decent poke damage down as well. Remember, Rakan, not exactly the tankiest of the, tankiest of the engages. But Trick just walks up, and if he's channeling Elastic Slingshot, a lot for Jinnah to think about. Yeah, you have to respect him. He could almost do it right in front of Jinnah and just zone them away from these turrets, but you mentioned the wave clear. They certainly still have it. And now we still pinging on bot side. When she shows, I think it's go time. Four and a half seconds or four odd seconds for the teleport channel. It's going to be most of the action happening before he even arrives. Alawi showing. I think Trick's going to go when the minion wave does come. He's going to go before. Yeah, it's a decent Arctic Salt, though, coming out from Umpty just to make sure that uh, Trick not going to find the Elastic Slingshot CC that he was looking for all the way underneath that turret. He Bit takes too impatient that time for... Zach, but he can, of course, just warmogs his way back to full health. I did like it that it, it was almost like he was listening to Papa Smithy. Charges the Elastic just, Slingshot just as soon as you say it. The minions are your friend. You know, game one, they were your ultra friend. Yeah. They were, in fact, the best player on the Rift. We didn't know who to give MVP to because we couldn't give it to the minions. Super consistent. Made no mistakes. <laughs> Good job, minions. Yeah, exactly the same. Wow, that was a turret game. there, apparently. No, nah, not really. Ghost uh, destroyed it. Not going to get smashed into an inhibitor. This ghost is playing pretty far up, but when he does get an, an auto attack, Tempt as well, a lot of damage with all the AP that he's built up it's just for such himself. A, such an awesome duality where the only way BBQ can lose 5v5 
5v5 fights if they opt into the reverse bouncy castle of their own creation. <laughs> they need to opt into going into the back line and finding the Alawi, saying hello to her, and then enjoying a leap of faith. Yeah. Otherwise, they win. But you may need to do that when you're trying to kill the Nexus turrets, you know? The amount of defense has been possible when the Baron buff is down or when you're fighting across very uh, defensive territory for Jyn Air will continue to delay the game. Seems like 50 minutes very likely to happen a second game in a row. Inside the wall. He's chilling. He's chilling. Like it. Okay. Here it is. I think you're actually right. I'm actually really worried moving into 45 minutes into this game. The early game. Game one was, you know, it was a long one, but nowhere near what uh, Jyn are capable of, as we all know. But the, the thing about Alawi is, the way that you beat her is to fight away from where Alawi is. Mm -hmm. But when you have to fight on a Nexus, you have to fight where the Alawi is because they're just... It, it, maybe this was Jyn Air's plan all along. So you're saying that Alawi was a scaling pick for them? Absolutely. <laughs> it's guaranteed to always be effective because you just leap of faith when they have to be hitting the Nexus. Well, we have good news. Four people have built their own item. The only person who doesn't have one is Trick. Wraith was, of course, the offender in the 94-minute game. Yeah. Took him 85-plus minutes to build an Ornn item. Ghost picking up the Mega Sword. <laughs> one pushing in topside. He will just back. So they've got at least one minion wave pushing against the Super Minions. Zaya bringing the minion wave bot side. Mid lane inhibitor respawning. We're still probably going to have one of them Titanic 5v5 fights, Atlas. Unless someone gets picked off. See if anyone's going to be able to do so. Teddy, pretty good at trying to find these pot shots, but the ace in the hold. Crazy's going to tank that one up pretty simply as Trick dives into the back line. And that's just going to buy enough room to take down this inhibitor in the mid lane. Trick takes a lot of damage, though. This might be the attempt of the fight here. They could try it all in. Yeah, Weaver's Wall comes down, and Ghost, he's isolated, has to flash, was holding onto it for as long as he possibly could. Because now that is a whole lot more time that BBQ have to wait before they're safe having a fight. Gonna have to be that third Baron, I'd have to say, for BBQ. They're looking for a brush camp, but there's some wards to show where they're at, and Zach does show on one of the wards. Yeah, they're gonna be clearing things out on their way back towards this Baron, though. 40 seconds to go. That one is going to be available. Six items now on most of the members of the Rift, and only one on item completion away from having five beside of BBQ. Yep, the Fountain Lazy that you were talking about as well, Teddy, sitting at 556 CS, has six items that all do big damage. And if someone gets into a side lane one more time, the Double Flame Horizon is possible. The least consequential Double Flame Horizon ever. <laughs> yep, the most unnecessary. Once again, Ace in the hole flies forward, and Trick's the one that's going to be taking the brunt of that damage. Does now have himself the Thorn Mail. Gargo a Stone Plate there as well, wanting that one to come back off cooldown, as now Baron is going to turn up. Don't want to take too many of those shots empty because Ghost does a lot of damage. I guess Gold Lee is actually between Ignar and his opposite number in Wraith, but 3,000 gold. Doesn't necessarily look that obvious in terms of the items, such as support itemization. And Ignar looking for one of them big flank teleports. The lane ward in topside, probably too shallow though. Ignar probably really excited that he can actually now look. It's a great ward flank about teleport. where Illawi is standing. You can see it there, a blue ward. That's going to be a great flank ward. Try to get on to Teddy. So Ignar stays in base. He knows eventually they're going to walk up. How much of a contest will there be? Baron pretty tanky. Well, they're going to do a lot of damage to it. Because as soon as Ghost turns up, it probably will just fall down. They are actually wanting to try and check. And Tempt is the one that locks it down. Weaver's well comes in. Crazy is the one caught on the wrong side. But he's Ignar. not where they want it all to come in. It's there, Ignar. The quickness gets all the chumps. Teddy is free hitting in the back line, though. Trick makes his way out. And Tempt is going to get picked up by the Alawi. Test of Spirit comes down, but they get the Baron, and they get out. BBQ lose no one. Yeah, insane that no one dies through all of that. Couldn't get back on access. No ultimate coming through from Soan. The minions are spawning and getting into the base, but not to end the game. Still a big win for BBQ. They need this third Baron to actually have a way to force the end of the game. Oh, my goodness. It keeps going, Papa. Zaya wondering which item to pick up now that the Ninja Tabi may not be as necessary. Ghost could grab Static Shiv, a few different things, trying to keep that uh, movement speed going, but decides instead it's just going to be an Elixir of Wrath and then move on. Values the movement speed. You can two-shot, you know, 
most things on the map at the moment. More damage isn't all that necessary, I can imagine. Ghost is still the only person that hasn't died in the game. Six, zero, and seven. Pretty heroic performance from him. Yeah, pretty high kill contribution as well, given the fact that he hasn't fallen. A bit strange to see him not actually opt into selling the boots. Yeah. Chasing for extra auto attacks, I feel like, is kind of unnecessary at this point in the game. You will notice that both of the AD carries, predictably, will have the Knight's Vow. Do note that you get half effectiveness from Ignaz because he is a ranged champion, not a melee champion. So a little bit more tankiness for Teddy. Probably not going to matter. If you're taking enough focus damage to fall within 12% of your health, you're probably dead anyway. Yeah, I was going to say. But still just something to note at home as we wait for what feels like the inevitable onslaught. BBQ will want both their waves to push in, and you just see it the third wave being ushered over by Crazy and Bot side. But do you commit hard? Does Trick still go for the same place that worked around easier objectives? Your first thought is no. So for now, the Baron buff minions aren't enough to actually cause Nexus turret damage. Well, they're doing the be their best to try and keep Jinnah spread across their base. Ignar turns up as Grace is going to be here as well. They're going for some sort of pincer move as the trick. As Elastic Slingshot Oops, gets he had to flash out of it, by the way. Yeah. He gets out of the way. Oh my god, Ignar takes a huge crit from Teddy, who's starting to do a lot of damage. Third wave here is not actually going to cause a lot of threat because the super minions, sorry, the super minions are gone. The uh, inhibitor is respawned in top side. So slow and steady is what's happening here. Waiting for a Weaver's Wall to potentially cut off some members. Actually, the Alawi adds a lot of wave clear as well. Oh my goodness, this is a disaster. Ghost. He actually hit a yeah, test of strength and it's going to force out the early redemption. Yeah, redeemed. The mega redemption. And we continue on, Atlas. The third inhibitor is going to respawn. Very heroic base defense. You see the struggle of trying to close out against this high wave turn. Even the Alawi. That's what I'm saying. Yes, silly. In the late game, second elder spawns. We're not on patch 8.4. So sadly, this is not the super mega old elder that basically wins the game. Honestly, when you look at the numbers on 8.4 PBE, it basically means if you click on it and it dies, you win the game. <laughs> yep. They should just say the end screen should just show up after that. Yep, that's the attack move to their base and go and microwave yourself something for, for a snack. I like it. So much delay here. All the turrets to have to move forward. Yep. Turrets, I say turrets because I mean traps. It's going to go all the way around to get around the trap line. They just want as many free inhibitors as possible. Well, they're engaging onto the Alawi. May not necessarily be what they want as they bring her into the back line. Bit of a disaster, to be honest, as the Leap of Faith was utilized and Trick is going to go down. Crazy now, setting himself up, so on. So extraordinarily low, does eventually fall. Now Ghost trying to get forward. Teddy and Ghost are so incredibly strong. In the end, it's a two for one in favor of Jinnet. Yeah, the kidnap onto the Alawi is not going to work out at this point in the game when she doesn't explode instantly. The Randuins and the Spirit Visage, they can push through mid lane. Can they take an inhibitor is the question for Jinnet. But BBQ for now actually holding up for a death brush. Oh, deep. He's just going to Arctic Assault his way in there. They really didn't want to choose this target. Is now Wraith is going to turn up. Ignar off to the side, I like that. Had the battle dance ready, so could have potentially gone for a re-engage if they wanted to. We can hit some records this series. That's what I'm feeling as we're 53 minutes into game two that looked like it was going to go the way of BBQ. If that's the case, then we should probably settle down. We should. We've got another 40 minutes to go. Our contract says excitement when excitement's due, and the last few moments have been pivotal. It feels like the game could end. But the kidnap really getting no value from the Zac means that the game once again delays. And Atlas, I think the fourth Baron is, uh, again, something that's required for BBQ to advance their already strong position and try to close the game. Yeah. You say fourth Baron. I'm, I think I'm going to be waiting around for, like, the ninth Baron. Is that, is that the one? Go. Yeah, the ninth Baron, I think, is going to be the one. That's going to be the one. Just so that's you guys know at home, again, if you look at the 8.4 notes, the changes are there. Baron gets stronger up to 40 minutes. The Elder Dragon's second spawn is incredibly powerful, targeted at ending the game. But Baron in this game scales up to 27 and a half minutes. That was 30 minutes ago, basically, yeah. at this point. Let's you know. Right now, it's not going to change the game, not going to warp the game. Only the super minions is really the relevant thing from the stats coming through from the Baron. Well, the quadrilogy force is in for Ghost. 
So that was what he decided to sell his boots for. That is probably the most money you can possibly spend on an item, so I like it. You're at this point in the game, 55 minutes, 614 CS. Probably a good option. Thing is, I think you'd be very worried. I don't think that Ghost has ever struggled so far this game with not having enough damage. It's not being able to auto-attack the right targets in these fights. It's too hard to go anywhere near a tentacle that could just pop out and destroy you. Teddy as well with the range advantage makes it difficult to be a Zaya. And from memory, I believe Ghost is one of the few players that ended a similar game to this Deathless in a loss. We have seen that before where he was on a huge score on, I believe it was spring season last year. But wasn't able to close the game and ended up just being a bystander as the next one's down. This could happen here. We're still primed for another team fight, maybe around the one hour mark, unless the Baron contest is going to be massive. His trick is going on a real vision quest on the top side. He is, and so on is actually spotted on a ward. You may think that he would be able to make it in time as the Weaver's Wall going to catch out crazy. Uses the flash actually to get himself out as there's the call of the Forge God, but Teddy, great positioning. Will be able to put a lot of damage into Trick, but he gets himself out with the Let's Bounce. It looked like the right time to initiate, but the trap line was there, so he slingshotted straight onto a trap and had to get away. Trick's flash is now down. Jinna going to go through the mid lane. Maybe the ultra late game Alawi power spike after the mid to late game hump was over is something we need to talk about because right now BBQ seems short on ideas. Yeah, it's like a power sign graph coming in for so on. I don't know <laughs> when it's supposed to, Does it then get like worse again at about the 70 minute mark and then really peaks at about 90? It's 90 minute Alawi is what we're looking for. Okay, that's the dream from Jinna. They're good at it. One of the two teams so far in LCK history that have made it to that point. I would say they dragged the other team to that point. <laughs> hey, and then won the game. So not bad. But 94 minutes is still 38 minutes away. So you have time to have your little drink of water. Yep. I'm going to lower my voice, remembering there's still a series after this. All right, do we want to go to just a slightly more subdued commentary style? We go back to the early game, everyone's farming. I see an ult. I'm still not convinced. Yeah, Call the Vodka going to be unbreakable. As Trick once again runs himself forward. But Teddy just does so much damage. That test of spirit is ridiculous. It's just shredding through Trick. He has to back away. Again, no kills from it. But could this be Jinnah's first Baron, knowing they have heavily chunked out Trick at least for another five, six seconds before the warm-ups? Yeah, the warm-ups, of course. He doesn't need to go back. He just needs to stand away from any of the action. So what felt like it could have potentially been an opportunity. Ah, uh, someone's in base here. Okay, yeah, Cinder's in base. Temp is going to be ghosting towards here. Trick tries to jump in. He's a little bit early. Gets the kidnap. Brings one of them back out. But Igna not going to grab anything with his initiation. The Baron goes over to Jinna. And they might even be able to get some kills. Umpty completely whiffs the ultimate, though. And that's going to be the disengage from BBQ. Yeah, the timer was perfect. First Baron of the game, 57 minutes in. The recall start for BBQ. Caught with their pants down a little bit. They did not think that Jinna would be so decisive. But they outnumber, they take the Baron. And for once, BBQ have to deal with an onslaught from Jin Air that they haven't seen since, what, 20 minutes into the game. But what does Jin Air now do, even if they have a Baron buff? It's three minutes of Baron buff now, but they have to leave their base. Their whole Alawi strategy saying, you have to fight around where we have an Alawi uh, is now you're gone. You're forgetting it's an Alawi sign curve. The split push is back on. All no right. more of that dirty grouping We're from the Alawi. We're back into the I'm sorry, Pop. <laughs> I lost my mind for a second there. All right, we're going to go for a 4-1. See whether Jin Air can actually split BBQ enough to try and get some work happening here. Yeah, 4-1 is possible, but so tricky against the huge engage. It's Where so are weird. Of command and all of I the don't know. Items. They know about it. They did it in game one, but yeah. game one was a while ago. They've forgotten. 233 vision score from Umti. I think he's getting promoted <laughs> in his solo queue game after this. Yeah. yeah he's like 110 points better than the Zac. Do you know what that means, <laughs> Atlas? It means really not that much. <laughs> no, it doesn't mean anything at all. It means that he cleared more walls. It means that we found something that we hadn't spoken about yet this game. It's I know! Been an hour, so that's pretty good as Trick's going to launch his way forward. Decent Larry. Back the CT is in goes in. He's dead! Goes grabs Teddy! This could actually be it! And Jinnah! They weren't able to sit in their base! 
So one's gonna get destroyed. Took a long time to go down that time. That's a very quick couple of kills, and they're exactly the ones that they wanted to remove. He pushed out the base, and Ignar finally got backline out. Just been searching for it for 30 minutes. He's back there again. I know. He's got teleport up. He can still go for a teleport play. Two members dead, including the Caitlyn, for 55 seconds. But apparently it doesn't mean that much. No, apparently not. So uh, I think Ignar always wanted to be a top laner, by the way, because <laughs> he has spent a lot of time ready for this fountain teleport. All right, there so it is. Okay. Teleporting into lane. It is still 5v3. They should, at minimum, get three inhibitors. Unless Ghost just gets more. killed by Grace. It's okay. Zompty Zompty trying to slow the minions. Yeah, it doesn't actually get there, though. And remember, they just need to try and take down these inhibitors. They're trying to get as many turrets as they can. Just distracting here. 25 seconds on So One, 20 seconds on Teddy. They want more, but the Orn ultimate gonna be interrupted. Can they just finish? Yeah, well, they're gonna take down these Nexus turrets so extraordinarily fast. Wraith dies as approximately an afterthought as Ghost flashes onto Grace, picks it up, Featherstorm's there to reset the aggro, and now he's gonna have some time with the Nexus. It's a 2-0 once again for BBQ, 60 minutes in. 111 minutes this series goes, 60 into 50. BBQ have to give up a Baron to close the game. That was the kind of series it was. Counter logic was the series. The end result though, BBQ once again going for this streaky play. Lose a series 2-0 to MVP, beat Kingzone, lose to MVP, beat this team here, the Jin Air Green Wings. It's a weird and wonderful LCK Spring 2018, but predictably, the favorite always goes down. Yep, apparently if they play MVP, it's bookended around victories, Papa. So certainly good news. You can see not very happy players on the side of Jin Air Green Wings. They do like playing into this ultra late game, but it just wasn't their time this time around, getting a little bit overexcited once that Baron came in, because I really feel like even with a Baron buff, they don't have the ability to move out of their base. They don't have the extra Orn items. They may be completely decked out, no more room to build anything. But with that little bit more statistics that were able to be picked up by BBQ, it just wasn't a Jin Air that had the opportunity to fight them. You can't ward your flanks if you don't have any inventory slots open to actually put down wards. That's how Ignar found himself into the back line, deleted the enemy AD carry, and we never even saw the respawn coming through from Teddy. Game was over during the duration of that play, so congratulations, BBQ. Their faint hopes of joining the top five stay alive. They put distance between them and the bottom of the table, and Jin Air Green Wings, we still continue that narrative of how good is Jin Air? How good is BBQ? How good is anyone in the LCK? The answer is pretty good, but the difference between pretty good and first place and pretty good and last place is very little. Yeah. I feel like we've got a middle of the pack that actually extends to the very bottom of the table. And then there's Kongu Monster or something like that. Yep. I'm sort of what it feels like, which is extraordinarily exciting because it means that anyone can win against anyone on any day. We need the confirmation of the second series of the day, Kingzone versus MVP, to let us know that we actually have a consensus top and a consensus bottom team. Because yeah. right now, we only know about the Kongdu side. We still need Kingzone to push through the madness of some recent results and show us a dominating 2-0 over MVP. Well, I mean, if MVP were able to take down BBQ and BBQ were able to take down Kingzone, we were talking about playing rock, paper, scissors, Papa. So theoretically, this one should go the way of MVP. But it's probably not going to be the case. What a day. It's Already. We've what had a week so far. I mean, after of a yesterday, game. yesterday was complete insanity as well. Two zeros coming in for Rocks Tigers against KT. And now we've got BBQ with another two zero against Jin Air against the run of play. Oh, man. A lot of damage coming out from Teddy. Seems to always be the way, but thankfully there was Ghost and there was Tempt in the last team fight, and that was it. These Talia comps have worked so well for Jin Air just a couple of series ago, used against them in this set. The Alawi pick let them down. The early game was fine, but after being forced to group by the long range engage from the Zac, the Zac as a weapon was actually very powerful just because of what it represented. They could never get forward vision down because they're Winning lanes eventually were stalled out by some ganks successfully on multiple members. And then Zack was coming out of darkness or threatening, coming out to engage. And the 1-3-1 one, one was turned against them again and again. They only got to group when they got the fourth Baron of the game. That was also 
turned around. So the turnaround day does mean that we get an MVP, and that MVP will be Ignar. Yeah, Ignar getting all of those flanks was my vote. I feel like he was playing out the early game quite nicely as well with the fact that BBQ had to play around a very early game focused Jin Air Green Wings, and he did so with a plum. The uh, Leona in game number one, also fantastic. So Ignar just having a really good day and getting the champions that really allows him to shine as a player that he is. He's an engaged machine, and he was able to engage any time he wanted so far. You see him on peel and you get disappointed, but but to see him on engage and I feel like Unsealed Spellbook was made for him. It's like someone watched SKT vs RNG and wanted a way, sorry, SKT vs Misfits and wanted a way to actually buff up Ignar further. You can <laughs> ban his Alistair, you can try to hold him down, but the amount of playmaking you can do between the cleanse and the teleport, early kill being granted to Crazy Loud and stabilize the Alawi lane. From there, there's kind of an, a, a, a uh, Rakan highlight reel throughout this game. Yeah, and Ignar predicting the flash there from Teddy as well, getting behind him. With the grand entrance, absolutely fantastic. He was skipping around these fights really nicely. We said that Wraith also played extraordinarily well on the Rakan, but Ignar saying, whatever you can do, I can do just as well. So on, trying to come from the flank time and time again after the early game, lane focused gameplay. Had to be shut down, gave them so low value. This is the first teleport onto Teddy, trying to hurry the members of Jin Air, just trying to cause as much threat onto Teddy as possible. That was only a warning shot. The big play was on the passage of play that ended the game. Yeah. This is a decent pick on Omdi though. Like, the game went on for so long, there were so many different plays. It's, that was fancy from Raid. Bit of a shout out to him over the other side. He actually played very, very well this, this series. So on, could not move far enough. This is the big play. This time Ignar gets in the back line. He has the cleanse at this point to guarantee the engage. Ghost, two shots. The Caitlyn that was out of range for the majority. And this passage of play wins BBQ the game. Yep, straight up. Just moved themselves up the mid lane and largely thanks to Ignar, but honestly, BBQ playing with a whole lot of tenacity so far today. And so we are going to head to the MVP interview. And unfortunately, we're not going to have Jolly. He's not going to be here, but thankfully, Joining us on Mumble, we've got Andy. Welcome, my friend. Hey, guys. Welcome to the LCK MVP interview. We're sitting down with the MVPs, Crazy and Ignore. So today's battle was between the 7th place and the 8th place. So you definitely needed to win today. So today was really important and we are really happy and we are going to try hard in the next game as well. So you guys might, you guys will probably feel a lot better now. Yeah, because if we lost today's game, we would have a lot of, we have a lot on our shoulders. So today your performance was outstanding and it seems like you guys prepared a lot for the series. So a lot of skirmishes as well. So we tried to revolve around CC and initiation and I think the plan really worked well. You know, for Jinair, the ace of the, ace of the team is usually the bottom lane. Yeah, Jinair's bottom lane, they have a lot of lane prowess and they're really good. Well, personally, I feel like I play better than them. So I feel like I can carry if I have initiating champions. Yeah. You pick Leona, which actually has quite a risk. Like for Leona, I actually favor the champion and I use it a lot in world as well. And the scrim results were also really good as well. So I have confidence going to the series. Although I didn't play perfect this game. For the top lane, a lot of those aggressive top laners are usually banned. So you do go for the tank champions. What pick do you think is the best right now? For now, I mean it's different for every every situation, but I think like Scion is good, Orn is good because it has short cooldown on ult. 
And I feel like the initiating champs are really the good ones. <laughs> In the first set, there was actually a pretty funny moment. You suddenly use a, you suddenly use the TP without context. We literally cut everyone off and we tried to end the game with backdoor and the plan didn't really execute well. So what calls did you make while doing this? Yeah, when we were pulling it off, we actually thought we were gonna win, but then it was a bit of a miscalculation, so we couldn't end the fight. At the last moment, did you feel like you won the game? Um, 60% lost, 40% win. <laughs> and I don't know, like the enemies just started melting away, so we eventually won. At the last moment, crazy, you just went in like without hesitation, and you guys, you just won the game. You're like the end game boss. Yeah, my teammates were just like, just go in, just go in. So everyone's just calling Talia, Talia, Talia. So for shot calling, Ignar, you're really passionate about order and shot calling. Are you usually this passionate, passionate about shot calling? Yeah, I mean, sometimes I'm out of my mind, but usually I try to stay calm and make shot calling as much as possible. <laughs> yeah, I I tend to do I tend to make better shot calling in tournaments. So in the second set, the enemy picked Ilaoi. Ilaoi. So were you startled? I mean, if I just um, evade Ilaoi's E, I have no problem versing Ilaoi. I mean, our jungle actually had a pretty hard time, so the game went a lot longer than expected. I mean, Ilaoi is pretty easy if you just evade the shots. I mean, Ilaoi is really good at split, um, split pushing, but it's not good in team fights, so I'm kind of hesitant on the champion. In the second set, there were times when the enemy actually had a stronger team fight, but you actually just kept, went, kept, just kept going in with the Orn. First of all, like we make, we do try to um, coordinate our shot calling and then we try to execute as perfectly as possible. So I kept asking my teammate whether, whether I should go in and then they trusted me so I went in and then it worked out well. In the second set, your Rakan was just phenomenal. I mean, there were quite like there were moments where you made um, high risk plays. <laughs> I mean, I predicted where the enemies were gonna go. Okay, let's have a look at the montage. Uh, did you expect to win after making the play? I mean, how did you think about this decision? Crazy. I mean, it's a compliment to your teammate. So taking the 2-0 victory. So you guys could have been in a consecutive defeat, but you guys win the game, taking 2-0. First, you crazy. 
이길 만한 경기, 지는 경기도 많았는데 so our games. Thank you, thank you for coming here and cheering for us. I appreciate it. 네, 이그라 선수도 부탁드립니다. Ignore you. Um, it's been a while since I've played in a Korean team and I'm always happy to play in the LCK scene and I do have a lot of fans overseas and thank you for your support as well. Good English. So taking the 2-0 victory, BBQ Oliver takes down Junior Green Wings and that's the end of the interview. Thank you. Thanks very much, Andy. And thanks, Ignar, for giving us a bit of a shout out in English. Yeah. If I was Andy, I would have been a little bit pissed off. I'm like, oh, I'm supposed to be translating this, but I don't need. Oh, this. Do I do it? The, does he do it the other way and puts it back into Korean? Well, all I can say is if you were a fan of Decisive Quick League of Legends, you'd also be peeved off Atlas. At <laughs> this 111 minute fiesta that we oh, had. 2 0, now we're going to have an hour. Bro. Nope. Wait a second. Nope. Just a 20 minute one, guys. No worries there at all. So. Could have been a big problem if uh, it had been a, a short one, but nope. And a musical chairs means a short hop up for BBQ. They do move yeah. ahead of Jinair in game score. So head to head not relevant unless the game score is the same. As a 2 1 would have been head to head, which would have gone the way of BBQ anyway. This means that BBQ is ahead. And it's just a weird world. Opposite day, opposite week, opposite year in the LCK, perhaps. But coming up next, theoretically, we have the best team against one of the bottom teams. So surely this one will be clear, Atlas. Surely. Yeah, 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 surely. Because, you know, Kingzone haven't lost to BBQ or anything like that. And then BBQ weren't able to also beat Jin Air, but lose to MVP. So MVP, theoretically, right now, should be the best team in the league. I have no idea what's going on. That's what makes the LCK so incredibly Weird exciting. and wonderful, for sure, is the word I would use. Weird and wonderful. Yeah. As we know, so guys, it's going to be a shorter break. It's about 20 minutes. It's going to be for the players to set up, for the fans to get into the arena. Will King's own style on MVP, or will MVP's two out of three wins in sets recently I mean this is more competitive than it seems on paper? Yeah, and are we going to have more crazy games like we did yesterday, like we did in our first series today? There's been all sorts of fireworks on Summoner's Rift for the moment. So, guys, make sure you st stay tuned for the next matchup coming up in about 20 minutes. We'll have yeah, short break. We'll see you after. Dragon X. MVP. Beginning of the end. 2018 League of Legends Champions Korea Spring Split. <laughs> 